Tonight, Bravo gives you the best seat in the house at a legendary music venue. From the historic Masonic Temple in downtown Toronto, Bravo presents At the Concert Hall, featuring country music superstars Lady Antebellum. What's up, everybody? I'm Matt Wells. You know, the life of a pop music star can be a pretty overwhelming thing. But what happens when you're a pop star and a country music star? Well, if you're Lady Antebellum, you win five Grammy Awards in one night and sell five million copies of your album, Need You Now, all while trying not to lose sight of some pretty important things, the music and the friendship. So now, while the music world wonders if they can duplicate that success, Charles, Hillary, and Dave are more concerned with focusing on what got them there in the first place, three friends making music. And it's working. Their follow-up to Need You Now, Own the Night, debuted at number one in Canada and the U.S., and we are thrilled to have them with us at the concert hall tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lady Antebellum. Like 
She left town early on a Friday Was heading down the family in New Orleans Says she needed to feel the sun on her face Talk it out with herself, try to get I was cold and strong, then I wouldn't feel a thing. Wish I didn't have this heart, then I wouldn't know the steam of the rain. I could stand strong and still, watching you walk away. I wouldn't hurt that I feel so up. Wish I was cold as stone. Almost turned around in Mississippi. Pulled over on the shoulder along the way. Fine by now, I'd be fine. All 
Wish I was cold stone. I wish I was cold as stone. I wish I was cold as stone. And I wouldn't feel the pain. I wish I didn't have this heart. And I wouldn't know the sting of the rain. I could stand strong and still. Watching you walk away. I wouldn't hurt like this or feel so all alone. I wish I was cool. Stay tuned. Lady Antebellum will return to perform their first number one song. Welcome back to Lady Antebellum at the concert hall. I'm here with Dave, Hillary, Charles. Um, you know, the pop world can be such a fickle kind of place. And, and you guys managed to cross over from country to pop in a way where it was almost like both worlds were claiming you as their own. And it's like you hit the jackpot twice because you had this amazing crossover success, which is rare. But I guess I'd like to know, what has it been like living between those two very different worlds? Because it's not something bands do all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think for us, you know, we didn't set out for that. We just try to, you know, we just focus on the music each time. And with this record, too, you know, we didn't try to chase, you know, making an, uh, trying to make another record with a song like Need You Now that could potentially, you know, cross over. I think more than anything, we're just a band that, you know, does have a little more of a contemporary country sound. So I think uh, maybe, you know, it does have more of a chance to maybe, you know, reach a broader audience. But, uh, you know, for us, we just want as many people to listen to it as possible. And, and you know, I think uh, sometimes the genre thing may prevent people from coming in and listening to music and records that they would otherwise really dig, you know. So we were, we were pretty fortunate, though. But luckily, it seems, too, the more time goes on, the lines are starting to blur a little bit more, which is yeah. exciting, you know, because there's a lot of great music that I think a lot of people don't hear because they're afraid to click on that genre, you know, because of the label. But I have to imagine it, it makes you extra busy, though, right? <laughs> Does it not? Because you're doing, like, the country shows and then you're doing and radio interviews and then you're doing yeah. the pop world. So you're doing double the work, really. I agree. Pretty much. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for reminding all the other artists out there. I know. We work, yeah. It, you know, it is a lot of hard work, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're excited to have three records worth of material, and, you know, going into, uh, you know, our headlining tour uh, this year and next year, you know, it's, it's nice to have a lot more songs to choose from and right. put on a really great show. You know, there's this great old music industry cliche I'm sure you've heard. is like, all it needs is one song. Get that one song. And, I mean, you know, you guys had one of those songs that that cliche is talking about. And, and Dave, let me ask you this. Um, at a certain point, you know, a band needs to be able to move on. We need to let a band move on from that song. Do you foresee or have you felt any challenges from doing that and getting to this next phase with the new album? Well, I mean, I th Need You Now opened a lot of doors for us. I mean, we are so happy with, with that song. I mean, as writers, you know, we wrote that song, and we were blown away to see what it did. Um, and I, we take it all as a positive thing. You know, a lot of people heard our music that may not have because of that song. And, um, you know, like Charles said, we're going to keep pushing forward and keep trying to to write stuff that we feel great about um, and not try to let just one song define us. We got a lot more we want to say. And I think, um, I think for a while, though, you know, it'll probably be, 
you know, I've, I'm noticing right now everything's kind of like comparing it to need you now or whatever. Right. And, and if they didn't, yeah, and then we're fine with that. I mean, I think as time goes on, um, you know, because it is still kind of fresh. I think for a lot of people, they just now started discovering us, what, you know, last year, you know. And so, but we feel, you know, we've had, what, three singles before that. And after need you now, we've had four or five singles. So for us, right. you know, we've moved on. But, but, us, but it is cool. Yeah. We're the problem. <laughs> we still yes. play it. I but promise honestly, we'll play it, though. But, but I think our goal is just to be around for a long time. We want to be around long enough that... People remember that we put that song out, but that's not what defines us. So, um, you know, hopefully we can just be around long enough that that's just a dot on the bio. You know, I read an interview you did very recently where someone was asking about, the, you know, the, the theme of love that goes through this album. And I think, Hillary, you, you said something like, um, love is the most written about and sung about topic because it's what we all want and it's what we all strive for. And you're right, and I think that's why love songs connect with us. Love is a battlefield. Yes. <laughs> love is Go with uh, that. Love is all you need. Um, yes. You know, good yeah. One. yeah, love can one. break your heart. L Everybody. It's for the way you look <laughs> yes. at me. It's no, so it, good it song is. Ideas. I mean, 99% of all songs are written about love, and I think that's because you know, we as human beings are defined and, and search for that, you know, our whole lives. And, you know, it really truly is, you know, it's it's the reason we live. And so, you know, we try to, I think, so so for that, it's something that I think we all can relate to. And so we just try to write songs that, you know, people right. can relate to. Well, um, you want to maybe play some of your love songs? Yeah, let's yes. do it. Wanna do, do you guys want to play some of their songs? <laughs>
Well, this is our first single ever out on country radio. I want to thank all you Canada fans for being with us from the very beginning. This is called Love Don't Live Here. Coming up, Lady Antebellum performs their huge hit, Need You Now. Welcome back to the concert hall, and now with more music from their album on the night, Lady Antebellum. Uh, 
All right, we're going to need a little help on this one. I want y'all to sing what Dave and Hillary are saying. I'm going to start it out, and it's going to go like this. But you just follow them, all right? Double duty tonight. Mr. Jonathan Long. And on this little thing over here, and the other guitars, the best brace is Willie Nelson. Give a big old hand to Mr. Slim Jason Gamble. All right, let's get everybody right here. Lift your voices up.
Y'all sounded great. It's a quarter after one. I'm all alone and I need you now. And I said I wouldn't call, but I'm a little drunk and I need you now. Oh. And I don't know how I can do without. I just need you now. Coming up next, Lady Antebellum reveals their secret to success. Okay, welcome back to the concert hall with Lady Antebellum. Feeling good so far? Yeah. Yeah, man. Sounding good. Thank, Thank you. you. Sounds the real good. Sounds great. And they look good? Yeah. They look awesome. They look great. They look real good. Fancy. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Um, you know, communication in any type of relationship 
is, is a struggle. It's something what? you really have to work, work what at. What did you say again? Communication oh, communica in any type of relationship. And listening is also really Jokers. <laughs> um, but you know, it's funny. I remember when I saw the, the, the Metallica documentary, Some Kind of Monster, and they had a therapist come in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were shocked by that. But at the end of the day, it's not that rare a thing in music. It's, it's just that Metallica made it public. Now, I will say, Metallica is a little bit of an extreme example. <laughs> but communication is difficult when success is huge and fast. But you guys have experimented with a communication mediator. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. It was after like our first, first year, year and a half or something. It's just, it wasn't anything too serious. It was kind of just somebody coming in just to kind of teach us how to navigate because we knew we had something really special and, and it was like, well, for the first time in your life, you're having to make decisions with someone else. This is before, you know, I was married or anything. It actually helped prepare me for marriage. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it is, I mean, you got to learn how to communicate and be very respectful and just, you know, all those things. Just just talk things out. That was something we didn't do enough in the beginning. You know, we let things fester. And then the last two years, I mean, I can truly say this, and, you know, not trying to sound cheesy, we're closer than we've ever been. And I think that's really rare for bands. Usually it, yeah. they start out really close, and then this is probably the time where the stress and everything starts getting to them. And, and for us, we've gotten closer. Well, it's like you were able to kind of uh, tackle that before that you had that huge surge of success. You had this mediator come in, right? Yeah, and one of the things that he said was it's better to be proactive than reactive, which right. I think is very, you know, a lot of therapists say that no matter if it's just one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. So um, that's what we wanted to be, you know, because we knew that and we really felt like we were brought together for a reason and we didn't want to do anything to put that in jeopardy, you know, not let one argument get blown out of proportion and it ruin something. Um, if you can, take me back to, to Grammy night um, and describe, describe this point, Dave, maybe. Start here, buddy. I'll try. This is a hard one to describe. You've got, you win one, you win two, you win three. Okay, so you've got the third one. What's going on? What are you guys talking about at the well, third one? Well, you know, honestly, uh, a good old country saying is we were deer in headlights. We were kind of <laughs> looking at each other completely just blown away. I mean, I think if we, we've said this before, if we would have just won one, I think it would have been this great night. We would have party, but it kept happening. And the third one, the fourth one, <laughs> which I mean. Which was great. Which is awesome we just kind of felt like it felt like we were watching a movie happen i mean it felt like an out-of-body experience where we were watching somebody else go up on that stage i know that sounds bizarre but right it was just i mean it was surreal and we, and we weren't really prepared i looked back and i was like gosh i wish there were so many people you know we forgot to thank because we were so shocked and and i i mean if we had any clue obviously we would have been more prepared <laughs> but we never thought we were going to be that beat proves out, we you had know. no idea okay. <laughs> right. I mean, come on, it's the biggest song of the year. It was like, how in the world did Need You Know? You know, so it was things like that, just, it was such a shock. Okay, so then you win four, and you win five. Now, when it got to the fifth, and you had one more to go, you must have thought, well, we could get six here. Come on. We were blubbering idiots <laughs> after five. Wow. I knew. I was we hoping we I mean, Okay, so you knew. So, so then when, yeah. it, when Arcade Fire broke the no-hitter, just, just tween us. Yeah. Were you like, we were like come on? No. No, no, no. We were no. like, what? No, you know what? You know what? I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm not kidding when I say this. I, I really think. I mean, it was almost to a point where it was like too much. And I mean, I think as human beings, no, everybody's like really happy, but they don't want you to get too much. And we felt like we were starting to get more than we deserved. So I was happy to see that. And yes. that's and the suburb is yeah. one of my favorite records. So it's really artistic record. It really deserved that. I mean, I, I do feel like you know I'm really proud of of our record and and that song. But you know, I, I think I think we're down the road. I want to feel more worthy of that. I feel like as a band, we're getting closer and developing our sound more. And uh, we have time to try to shoot for album of the year. You know, we, but we, we feel pretty fortunate with what, the night. Your communication skills are amazing, but <laughs> you've really worked on these. Good. <laughs> excellent answer. <laughs> excellent answer. <laughs> um, Enunciate. <laughs> Enunciate. Um, listen, thanks so much for chatting. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank, thank you, everyone, you. for being here. Thanks. You guys are great. I think maybe uh, play some more music. All right, thanks, guys. So we'll give you one more, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. This is our first single off the On The Night record. This is Just A Kiss. Sorry.
Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bravo.